earlier videos was the purchaser receiving using the warehouse management app in Dynamics 365. And earlier this year, uh, Microsoft came out with a new uh, app for warehouse management. So what I thought I would do would come out with a with a new series of videos, maybe the more popular ones using the the warehouse management app, the new one that, that has just come out, just so you can see how it works um, and, and what the kind of the process flows, what the screens look like. So what we're gonna take a look at today is the purchase receiving process in the new um, warehouse management app. So what we'll do first is we will go ahead and cover the uh, setup here and then we'll go in and create a PO and then receive it using the warehouse management app. Um, there are chapters in this video, so you can click around. If you already know the setup, you can go in and click over to the uh, just the warehouse management app process. But uh, if you're new, uh, stick around here for a second, and I'll, I'll kind of walk through the setup with you. All right, so let's flip over to Dynamics 365. And first place we're going to go here is when we're doing a purchase order receive, we do need to have a work template. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this so we can see it. Either. So I'm going to go underneath warehouse management. I'm going to go underneath setup and then work, and then work templates. And when you get in the work templates, you wanna make sure you select the correct work order type. So I'm gonna select purchase orders to show me my uh, purchase order templates. And I'm gonna be doing working in warehouse 24 today. Uh, so everything we'll be doing is, is warehouse 24. Now this is Contoso data. And the Contoso, default Contoso data just has this 24 PO receipt line. That's got a quality check in it. I've gone over before how to do quality checks. I'll link the video here if you're interested in that. But just to keep it simple today, what I've done is I've gone ahead and created a no QC uh, check work template just so we can keep things simple um, and put it. And as long as I set it above the other work template, um, it'll pick that one there. And the only criteria I have in my query will be the warehouse number that we're working with today, which is uh, warehouse 24. And then as far as the work template itself, it's very simple. We're just going to do a pick up and a put down. So all work templates have a pick and a put side. So you're going to pick something up and put it down. All right. The other thing we're going to go ahead and take a look at after we get done with our work template, let's go ahead and look at the location directives. So if we go in the location directives here and same sort of thing, we want to go ahead and go ahead and select the purchase order work order type and we'll look for uh, warehouse 24. Now when you're doing purchase receiving, you don't need a pick side of a location directive. Normally like if you're doing sales picking or whatever, you're gonna need a, a pick and a put side, but everything is gonna go into the default receiving location. That's where it'll it'll pick it up from and then you know the put side is to actually put it away. And I'll show you that default receiving location setup in just a second. But it, so we have this one location directive here, 24 PO direct. So again, the, the location directive is telling it's a put. We've got it for warehouse 24, uh, site two, and this is gonna be for all items are gonna go this, or basically all items up to 99,000 are gonna go and use this directive. And what's it's gonna do, it's just gonna look for a fixed or non-fixed location. We can go ahead and hit the edit query here. And it's just gonna look for a location profile of floor. So what that means is all the locations have profiles assigned to them. It's gonna look for a location that's got a, a location profile that is set to floor, okay? So we'll go ahead and cancel out of there. Now, as far as the default receipt location, we can find that underneath warehouse, or we're still under warehouse management setup, warehouse, so we'll go to warehouses. And let's scroll down. Once this loads, we'll see, we'll be looking for warehouse 24. And we'll scroll down to 24. And then we're going to look for um, inventory and warehouse management. And here's our default receive location, okay? So one thing to note on this default receipt location, the location has to be set up as a license plate controlled location, right? So this is one of the locations that, that is used in Dynamics that's gotta be license plate plate controlled. So kind of the flow of this is that you're going to scan the items. You'll probably print out a license plate and stick it to the items. There's ways to work around that, but that's kind of the generalized flow. You, you know, the thought is that you scan the item, a sticker sprints out the little license plate on it, you apply that to the item. Then when you go put it away, you're going to scan that license plate and it's going to direct you where to put it away. Okay. So that's the, uh, the default receipt location. Okay. So let's go down to procurement and sourcing and let's go to all purchase orders. And what we'll do is let's, we'll create a new purchase order to use for an example. And the vendor account we're going to use is just one, 1001. 
Here we go. I'll let off that little fill in. And, I'm, and again, I'm going to use Warehouse 24, so I'm going to specify it here. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK. All right, so now we'll add our lines. We'll add two lines to this one. We'll add an A0001. And let's order, let's do five of those. And let's add in line. We'll do A0002. And let's do 100 of those. Okay. So it's very important that once we create a PO, we need to confirm a PO or, that, or it won't show up in our device. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit confirm here, and that will confirm the purchase order. And that'll make it where it will show up in our device. All right. So now this is fun part. Let's go ahead and I'm going to copy that PO just so I have it. And let's flip over to the mobile device. So here's the, the new mobile device. You're going to log in just like you normally would. So I'm going to put in my login, put in my password, go ahead and sign in. You get your menu settings. It's the same menu structure that we, we saw before. So I want to show you this. We have our inbound, outbound menus here. So where that's controlled is, let's go ahead and flip back over to our warehouse management setup. So it's the same place it was controlled before. So if we go underneath our setup, we look at our mobile device, we have our mobile device menu and mobile device menu items. So if we click on our mobile device menu item here, and let's go down to, let's just look at our purchase receive. So same, exact same setup as we had before, will be work on the same device. And I should mention as well that you can use the old device and the new app in tandem. I'm saying device, but I'm meaning, meaning app. So if you have the old app and you have the new app, those can currently be used in, in tandem. I'm assuming at some point uh, Microsoft will deprecate the, the old one and it'll, it'll go away. But right now they're, they're, they're able to work in tandem. So the ones that we're going to be using here are the purchase order item receiving. It's a license plate grouping here. We're generating auto license plates automatically. And then you have a, have, a, have a put away, which is a user grouping there. So pretty much the standard stuff we, we've used before. And then just to be complete, what you do once you have your item set up, you're going to go to your menu and you want to add your, your different menu, your items to different menus, right? So this is going to be found on the inbound side and we should see our purchase order receive and our purchase order put aways that we're going to use today. Okay. So let's flip back over to our app and we'll go to our inbound side and we'll go to purchase order receive first. And so this is the, the screen that we're going to look for. It's going to ask us to enter our purchase order number. So this would be a scan or everything I'm going to do is going to be an entry because I don't have a scanner. So I'm going to click there, enter our PO number was 304 and hit enter. And that's going to load it up. So the next thing it's going to do is going to ask you to scan the item. So let's go ahead and scan our A0001 first. There we go. And now this is going to be asking for the quantity. So this is a slider. So if I can get this to work with my mouse, I'm going to click. But, but normally if you have an app, this will actually be a slider. So we ordered five of those. I'm going to act like it's a slider and just slide it over to the five. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then it'll give you uh, check the values. Now, if you've got more than it'll fit on the screen, you can click on the screen. And it'll it'll show you all the values there. Or tap on the screen. We go back and then we're going to just go ahead and say OK. All right, so that one's completed. And then we can go ahead and scan our second item, which was our A0002. And there we go. We still have the same thing, same, same um, app here, but as soon as we get past a certain point, it's going to ask us to enter in the values because if you're, if you're sliding or, or um, you don't have to slide all the way to like 100, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in our 100 there that we ordered. And we're going to say hit OK. And then we have our same recap screen. We can enter exceptions there if we have same same thing as what happened before. If we've got you know broken boxes or something, we want to send it to a different location. We can use exceptions for that. And then we're going to hit the check mark there, and that one's confirmed. Okay. So what's going on in the background is once you do that receive step, uh, we're going to see that that work is generated for the put away. Okay. So let's go back into warehouse management and take a look at the work that's generated. All right, so we're going to go to all work, and then we should see, so here's the work that was generated for our purchase order. So three, three, purchase order 304, so the work is 644 and 645. So if I go ahead and open up one of these work here, we'll see that you know a, gener a license plate got generated automatically. That's from the menu item, and then it's telling us to take it from the default receiving location, which was RECV to this FL001 here, okay? So when you're doing the put away, you can either do it by work or you can do it by license plate. 
Okay, so let me close this out. And let's go ahead and copy that work ID. And let's go ahead and take a look at the put away. All right, so we're going to hit cancel here to cancel out the receiving. Let's go to the put away. So we can either scan the work or the license plate. So we're going to scan that. And this time we'll enter in the work uh, there and hit enter. And here's our, our work here that we're going to do. So it's telling us to pick up from the receiving location item A0001 for five pieces. We, we can override the location or do a short pick from this at this point. I'm just going to hit OK. Now this particular menu is set up to group things together. So I'm going to I'm just going to do these lines one at a time. I could do these two, you know, multiple times, but I just want to do these one at a time for us. But normally you'd scan the second one, for example, and we'll hit done here. And now it's going to tell us to go put this item in uh, in location FL001 here. Okay, so we're in, and you can do an override location. You can also do a split put from here. I'm just going to say OK. And that work has been completed. So if we come back here to our work, hit a refresh, we should see that work go away because now it's closed. All right. Now the other way you can do this, if we go and click on the work, remember at the first outside of the video, I told you you could, you know, you print a license plate sticker and could get a license plate printed. Uh, I'm going to just copy that license plate there so I have it. And the other way we can do it here is so we're going to scan our license plate. I'm going to copy and paste it in. And now it's going to be the same process here for our A0002 item. Pick it up from the receive location. And then we're going to be done with this. This one now it's going to tell us to put it into location FL002. And put that and now that work has been completed. Okay. So the other thing I should mention here is I'm showing you a two-step receiving process. In the menu, in the mobile device menu, you can do a receive and put away. It basically combines all that together and does one setup, one process. It's the exact same setup, same work template, same location directives, um, but it just combines all that together into one process where you scan the item that you're receiving and it's going to immediately go and tell you to put it into that location. Okay, so again, today's a quick look at the purchase receiving app, the new app that came out. It looks really good. It's a lot it's more modern, looks, looks nicer, uh, a lot easier to read in my opinion. Uh, so I hope you found some value in this. Hope you liked this preview. Um, it, if you did, please give this video a like or thumbs up. That'll just help me out on the distribution of the video. And also, I put out a video about once a week. This series is going to be three or four videos here where I'm just taking the most popular warehouse management videos and and uh, showing you what they look like on the new mobile device. So if, you, if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you get notified when I upload a new video. Okay? So again, hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.